Yo, he kills it, dude. This shit's fucking fire. Yo, Sapio's fire, bro. The crepe lasagna? Oh, that was really good. Get the fuck out of here. Crepe lasagna? Yeah, he makes a fucking lasagna with crepe. Hey, guys, we need direction. Okay, so you go straight. So my name is Craig Leichfeldt. I'm the owner, creator of Guns and Butter. You ever been at, I mean, you've probably been to a pop-up before, right? The second I stepped out of Michigan, the goal was, you know, I'm gonna come back and open up an amazing restaurant. Um, the scene is just, it's starting to explode a little bit. I mean, it's not only places that are opening, but places that are opening that on a national, international level, they're operating on the same, uh, you know, playing field. That's huge. The diners themselves is huge. Currently, we're on like a 5,000 person wait list. They want great food. They want, you know, a great product. I heard this all the time, like, what are you crazy? Like, you can go open up a prefix tasting menu restaurant in Detroit? Like, everybody's willing to try something, but you better come with the right product. Because if it's bullshit, then it's not gonna, you know, we're gonna say it's bullshit. There's interest, and they're willing to try. I mean, it's a city that was based on, you know, invention, right? So this dinner, this pop-up, was in collaboration with Shinola for Detroit Restaurant Week. So Shinola is a Detroit-based company, watches, bikes. They are at the top of the game. Just because the synergy was aligned, um, it, we blew it out of the water. I like that. So let's bring them all together a little bit. You know, there's uh, challenges definitely with doing pop-ups, right? First and foremost is labor. So finding freelance restaurant employees is next to impossible. Do you need any front of the house stuff? Do you need Do you need to go do any, anything? Like uh, my main, like main server Mike, right? Mikey. He was uh, documented the first pop up that we did. So he was the videographer, right? He happened to mention like, hey, I have served tables in the past. And I was like, okay, you're hired. My dishwasher's homeless. His name's D. D Money. Ready for another fun night? He is a hardworking guy. You ever want to know stories about Detroit and what it's really like growing up? You talk to D. You're hired. Michigan's the, its agricultural scene is insane. The second largest agricultural production outside of California? Who knows that? As far as the menu, again, starting with the product and also representing our region. This past week, it was like, all right, spring is here, thank God. So I really wanted the food to kind of continue that momentum. I wanted everything to be bright and, and light and, and refreshing. And I think the highlight of the menu for me was uh, the duck. It's incredible. We started uh, dry aging ducks. Literally just wanted to put the duck on the plate. As far as, you know, because the goal was to just like highlight the lake the breast, highlight the skin, the jus that can be made from the carcasses. Our goal is not to be a supper club. I hate supper, I mean, I don't hate supper, I hate supper club, all right? Our goal is not to be anything more than a pop-up restaurant. And the word restaurant is the most important part. Two James. After service, Anthony Curris and Doc, Dave Goldman and Mark McInnes. We went out. That was who was in the van initially. Yeah, these two were the, these two were not the proper two to sit in the back, dude. Honestly, right? Exactly. Yeah, you don't know Doc well enough, though. Doc was two James. Two James is um, the bar distillery. Pretty small, like tasting bar. Got in the two James. Started catching that second wind. It's usually when you walk in the door of the first bar. Very similar to what Guns and Butter will be. Straight to the dome. It's fucking awesome. This space is incredible, right? Yeah, it's very cool. It's it's super a, fucking cool. Is it an old factory or? Yeah, I think. Yeah, I mean. It looks like it. And started just to feed off the energy of, of Two James itself. The space and the products and you know the execution, like it commands that type of you know, energy. Early 1900s donut factory. 
Fucking awesome. Imagine the smell of fucking donuts in here. For real, donuts are the greatest thing in the world. <laughs> Andreas took us around and showed us the the uh, you know distillery. Oh my god, dude, that's so fucking awesome. All the magic happens. 500 yeah. gallon copper still. We just still everything in here: vodka, gin, bourbon, white whiskey. Uh, so we have everything aging here. We have 100% rye whiskey, which is uh, aging for six months. We'll be ready in about a year and a half. It's sort of the best white whiskey in the country at the moment. Fuck yeah. You hear that? And we started putting down absinthe. The absinthe? Yeah. You guys like, is this two different kinds of wormwood in it? Mine. Roman wormwood and grand wormwood. I should have been sipping that. Cheers. Cheers, guys. <laughs> Cheers to experiments. I guess someone pours me a cup like this and we do a cheers, like you fucking take the shot. I took it to the dome, bro. So that was, uh... <laughs> Wait, yeah, so what's, what's, what's it do with Walmart? And I look around, everybody's still got that much of their cup left, so, uh... That was a great start to the night. I guess it pretty much set the tone. Nothing's impossible. Do people smoke weed on camera or no? Everybody want to get in the minivan? Ain't that right? Oh. Are we gonna get hot dogs? Hot dogs! Fuck uh, yeah. Lafayette Coney Iowa. You sit at the counter, watch them sling the fucking hot dogs. And when they're busy, they'll bring them up to here. So I went to Lafayette, which, I mean, Detroit's dining scene is Lafayette. It's the Nathans of Detroit. It's amazing. This is my guy, this is my guy right here, ball guy. The counter seating and the combination of like the counter and then like the table booth seating is something that uh, has been engraved in my head. Had some whiskey, thanks, you know, to two James. You want ice? Ice. Listen, don't fucking feed me liquor, bro. You take a shot and I'll take a shot. Listen, you take a fucking shot, I'll take a shot. MVP. Cheers. MVP. 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 You killed it, bro. Top notch. Oh! You just stole one of my women's, you fucking ass. I'm coming home, it's my seat. You can have it. Oh, my man, this is what I'm talking about, bro. Put down a couple conies, and a fucking hot dog. Onions, mustard, hell yeah. Mm, dare even think about that. We're just gonna do it, it's gonna do it. Run it, chili only with cheese. It's a one of a kind, right? You only can experience that at Lafayette. Oh, hello. Day to day, you know, it's these these people, you know, start to become part of your family, you know, your inner circle, right? The waiter at Lafayette Armor, God knows how many years he's probably been there, probably over 20. Just happy, man. I gotta grab these two for Come on, Bernardo. Take the magnets out. <laughs> Love this fucking guy. Oh. Here we go. Yo, can I get a selfie? Fuck yeah. A lot more food to be eating around here, man. I know you like the gourmet shit. Let's go to the place that every other place tries to emulate. What? Cafe de Mongo's. You think so? Yep. In what sense? Uh, diversity of the crowd, the eclectic nature of the entire restaurant. There's no other place in America that I've ever seen that can kind of uh, America. Emulate. America. America. This is what LA bars try to, like the dive bars try to pretend they are. <laughs> wow. I'm a Southern California. That's a guy. fucking comment. That's a fucking statement, actually. You know, went over to uh, to Cafe de Mongo. The quintessential, like, neighborhood kind of pub, right? Went to go talk to Uncle Larry. I got two days left in Satchel Limitation. <laughs> So Larry is he's an icon. He's an icon of Detroit. Reasonable, honest drinks, live music, and a lot of laughter. Well we're at Cafe de Mongo. It's truly a club that was not developed by me. It was open by the young people of Detroit. They used to see me sitting in here with a bunch of old black gangster friends of mine. A bunch of these little young hipsters, which you seeing, it was no genius to your mind. It was kids, the new generation of Detroit, that opened these doors, 
told me to get out and do, do not come back until 2 o'clock in the morning. And that's the truth. The rest is history. Hey, Mary, she wants to, she wants to tell you something. Right. Y'all don't know one thing. You know the benefit about a man becoming old? All your women fuck me. In Larry's own kind of pub and his own direction of decor and atmosphere he sets up. It's very simple, right? I don't <laughs> I don't drink booze often, but when I do, no, no, I'm gonna get beat. it's too James. <laughs> you know, after the Mongo, we went back to, to my loft where I live and also where we run Guns and Butter. Nicole, Nick, and Alea, that was who was in the van. And so we rode over. Uh, we're going oh. to Eastern Market. Back to the market. Going, going back home. Now the question was, well, we want you to cook your late night, you know, munchie that you like to eat. The thing is, is that my favorite late night munchie, I don't cook. It's usually a pizza from Sapinos. We're gonna have a little get together. People come back. We're gonna cook some food. Dave, uh, Dave Mancino. Yeah. He's gonna rock it out with his uh... straight fire, bro. When this came about, I reached out to Dave Mancini from Sapinos, and I was like. Would you be interested in doing this? Because I don't want to lie to people. I want to keep it real, but you know, it involves you. So my late, my favorite late night munchie is uh, Sapinos, man. Maybe it sounds real loud up there. It sure does. Oh wow! It sounds like a frat party up there. I'm a little nervous. Like... How you doing? Hey, I got you some munchies. Green beans. Fuck yeah, I'll take that. Green beans. Take oh, it's on your fucking floor. Absolutely. Yeah. Some different stuff tonight. I usually do pizza, but I got some uh, chicken parm. I got some. Uh, Fuck yeah, dude. All the cajo. I got some arancini. I got some. Hell yeah. Dude. Open, open, open. Oh yeah. You guys should eat. Yeah, bro. Thank you. Yeah, buddy. No, this is fun as hell. Like one of the beautiful things about Detroit is that we're all like the chefs here all know each other. Right? You know, we we hung out, we drink beer, we you know cook, we like party together all the time, and these guys are all like. Detroit's a place that we need more joints like what he's trying to do. Listen, man, we're very strong, fun, positive, interesting people here. Like, this is not a wasteland. Like, it's fucking stupid to us, you know? We hear it and we chuckle because we know the truth. But it's about time we start showing people that side of it. Guns and Butter, I wouldn't call it sister, I would say it like adopted sister, maybe? A uh, restaurant is going to be opening in late summer 2014. Currently, you're in the future space of the restaurant. I mean, that's how we do it. We have fun. For me, what Guns and Butter is, the philosophy behind it is creating, you know, an identity to our culture. So that was kind of the goal. That was our late night munchie. It was amazing, dude.